Hi, it's Katrina. Number 9. Plot to Kidnap the Pope The Vatican began openly condemning Adolf Hitler in 1943. It was around this time a former Nazi general later claimed that he was tasked with kidnapping the Pope. The allegation came to light during the 1970s when former SS General Karl Wolf said that Hitler had ordered him to occupy the Vatican, take possession of its records and treasures, and relocate the Pope up north to avoid having him fall into Allied hands. There are conflicting opinions on whether any of this is true. Former Washington Post correspondent Dan Kurzman claimed in his 2007 book about the topic that the interviews he had conducted with Germans and Vatican officials, including Karl Wolf, left little doubt that the kidnapping plot was serious. He acknowledged that there are no German documents referring to it and said that this is because Hitler prohibited any details of the plot from being put into writing. British journalist John Cornwall also believed that the conspiracy was real and that Wolf managed to get Hitler to drop the plan. Others are less convinced, including historians David Alvarez and Robert Graham, who described the evidence of the supposed planned kidnapping as mixed at best. They further pointed out that the operation would have outraged Catholics worldwide, including in the majority Catholic nations that the Nazis had taken control over. Historian Owen Chadwick thinks that by all appearances, both the Germans and the Allies had agreed to keep their hands off the Vatican, and in Chadwick's opinion, a kidnapping was incredibly unlikely. What do you think about all this? Let me know in the comments below. Number 8. Operation Pastorius Part of Hitler's master plan for world domination involved taking over the United States. He hoped to do this by sabotaging the country from the inside. One of his plots, known as Operation Pastorius, would target several major American economic targets, including hydroelectric plants at Niagara Falls, aluminum plants in several states, the Horseshoe Curve Railroad Pass in Pennsylvania, Hellgate Bridge in New York, and numerous other factories, plants, and transit facilities. In June 1942, eight agents were given fake identity documents along with $175,000 in cash and instructed to blow up the targets. They were loaded onto U-boats and took off toward America's east coast. One party landed in Amagansett in New York and took the Long Island Railroad into Manhattan. By then, they had caught the attention of the authorities, and a manhunt was underway. The other party landed near Jacksonville, Florida. Two of the men in New York, George Dash and Ernst Berger, agreed that they had come to the United States with plans to defect and that they hated Nazism. They turned themselves in to the FBI, and the other six conspirators were soon caught. Berger received life in prison, Dash was sentenced to 30 years, and the six others were executed in the electric chair just weeks after the failed operation would have been carried out. Number 7. Expedition to Antarctica Conspiracy theories about the Nazis in Antarctica have increasingly gained traction in recent years. One tale tells of a secret base the size of a small city, known as Base 22, or New Berlin, which was allegedly used by both the Nazis and the Illuminati. The alleged clandestine facility supposedly centered around the development of sophisticated technology and superweapons based on Nazi encounters with advanced extraterrestrials. Some even claim that the base still operates today, and that the Nazis, the Illuminati, and their helpers from outer space plan to launch a new world order. While these claims are more than doubtful, the Nazis did set their sights on Antarctica at one point. As the party gained power throughout the 1930s, it sent an expedition to Antarctica to survey the area and claim part of it for themselves. One of their goals was to develop alternatives to imported oil and fat-based products like butter, cream, milk, lard, margarine, and candles, so that they were prepared if Germany was cut off from trade during the war. As a main ingredient of margarine at the time, whale oil appealed to the Nazis as a potentially valuable resource. Until then, the Germans had been buying whale oil from Norway, but they no longer wanted to give the country their business. So they built whaling ships and headed south toward Antarctica in 1938. Their intended destination was an area now known as Dronning Maudland, but the Norwegians beat them there and claimed ownership of the region in early 1939. Of course, the Nazis disputed this. They named the area Neuschwabenland and made plans to go back at least two times. But these return voyages never happened due to the escalating warfare between the Allied and Axis powers. It's believed the Germans planned to build a base there, 
but most mainstream experts say that this never happened, despite the ongoing rumors about Base 22. The claim to Antarctica was abandoned in 1945, and there are no signs that they traveled there after their initial expedition. Do you believe the Nazis could have built a secret base in Antarctica? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! Number 6. Expedition to Tibet In early 1939, a five-member Nazi team traveled to Tibet under the orders of Heimlich Himmler to search for the origins of the so-called Aryan race. They were looking for one of the places where people of the purest blood supposedly went after the mythical island of Atlantis sank. According to subscribers of the outlandish theory, evidence of this imaginary group would most likely be found in the Himalayan region, ultimately bringing the team to the city of Lhasa. Unaware of the deluded belief system that had motivated the mission, locals welcomed the men and treated them well. The team went on to closely examine the Tibetans, taking thousands of photos, making casts of their body parts, measuring their skulls and facial features, and taking thousands of artifacts. But the trip was cut short when the war broke out, and the team returned to Germany. Zoologist Ernst Schaefer kept the information and objects gathered on the trip at his home in Salzburg, but the collection was destroyed by the time the Allies raided the property in 1945. Number 5. Operation Werewolf Toward the end of World War II, the Nazis made a last-ditch effort to create a resistance force that would operate secretly behind enemy lines. Codenamed Operation Werewolf, this elite regiment of volunteers didn't fight in plain clothes or disguise as many have mistakenly believed. They were uniformed soldiers who were meant to operate similarly to Allied commandos. The organization was headquartered in Berlin, and the plan was to train recruits in guerrilla warfare tactics that the Nazis had observed among the Soviets in some of their captured territories, including Ukraine. But things didn't go according to plan. Shortly after the Allied invasion of Normandy in 1944, rumors began to circulate about a secret Nazi guerrilla force. The following year, the notorious politician Joseph Goebbels urged every German to fight to the death in what became known as the werewolf speech. Little did the world know, the werewolf unit had already been partially dismantled by then. Propaganda nevertheless continued to spread primarily through a radio station called Radio Werewolf, which claimed the Allies were planning to enslave Germans. The broadcast called on civilians to stand their ground, even if it came at the expense of their lives. After the war, German officers admitted that the werewolf unit was insufficient and weak, and that its leader, Hans Adolf Prutzmann, was equally incompetent. In other words, the regiment wasn't nearly what it was chalked up to be, and it was a non-threat from the beginning. Number 4. Operation Greif At the beginning of the Battle of the Bulge in late 1944, Hitler commissioned commando leader Otto Skorzeny to run interference and sabotage Allied communications and morale. Codenamed Operation Greif, the mission involved disguising English-speaking Germans in uniforms from captured American soldiers and sending them behind enemy lines with forged U.S. Army documents. These undercover troops misdirected tank traffic, switched road signs around, destroyed ammunition dumps, destroyed telephone lines, and basically wreaked havoc on Allied operations. Luckily for the Allies, these commandos didn't cause any serious damage, but they did manage to spark some serious confusion and panic among U.S. forces. American soldiers caught on to the scheme and spread the word to be on the lookout for the culprits. They set up road checkpoints and quizzed those passing through on American sports and pop culture. Sadly, this led to the detention of genuine Allied troops. To add to the chaos, any imposters who were captured tried to throw off the Americans by claiming that commandos were plotting to kill General Dwight D. Eisenhower. He was put into protective housing out of a concern for his safety. In the end, Operation Greif did little more than inconvenience the Allied war effort. With the operation at a standstill, the Nazis withdrew the commandos. U.S. forces continued to search for the imposters for several months before realizing that they were already gone. Number 3. Salon Kitty Salon Kitty first opened as a high-end brothel in an upscale section of Berlin. In 1939, it became a Nazi-run business that the Germans used to spy on their own high-ranking members. The owner, Katharina Zamet, had tried fleeing to the Netherlands in 1938 but was stopped at the border. She was forced to meet with a Nazi intelligence agent named Walter Schellenberg, who had collaborated with one of his colleagues to use the brothel for spying purposes. They gave Zamet two choices, cooperate 
or go to a concentration camp. She continued running the business mostly as usual, but took on 20 extra workers who she was told to assign specifically to certain Nazi customers. There were also microphones installed all over the place, along with a listening room in the basement. Meanwhile, Schellenberg's team arrested prostitutes all over the city and handpicked 20 of the most attractive women for the job at Kitty's. The team also recruited through Nazi administrative offices. Starting in 1940, the women took Nazi customers into their rooms and got them to loosen up with some alcohol and some fun. The extent of the information gleaned from the operation is unknown because records are scarce, but it seems as though nothing too promising came of it. By the time the British destroyed the building during an air raid in 1942, the project had been abandoned for its lack of usefulness. Number 2. Operation Lena The Nazis' planned invasion of Britain, codenamed Operation Celion, was put on hold after a large amount of Luftwaffe planes were shot down during the Battle of Britain. But Hitler decided to go ahead with part of the invasion plan, known as Operation Lena. The project involved infiltrating Britain with Nazi-trained secret agents to carry out espionage and sabotage missions. A diverse array of English-speaking men and a few women were chosen, including recruits from Germany, Norway, Netherlands, Belgium, France, Cuba, Ireland, and Britain. They were dropped by parachute into remote parts of Ireland and England and transported near the coast by submarine, then paddled to an isolated beach on a dinghy. Their next step was to find somewhere to lay low and await orders from their commander. The agents were then tasked with arranging parachute drops of explosives and sabotage equipment, which they would use to blow up airfields, power stations, and aircraft factories. They were also directed to attack Buckingham Palace and poison the water supply. British authorities kept any knowledge of the operation secret from the public, and it wasn't until years later that historians learned about it through freedom of information laws. As it turns out, many of the agents quickly turned themselves in, claiming that they had only accepted the mission as a way to escape from the Nazis. Others were captured within days when locals noticed out-of-place individuals behaving strangely and reported them. British counterintelligence was one step ahead of the Nazis in several ways. For example, a Welsh policeman volunteered to help the Germans in exchange for securing the independence of Wales. Little did the Nazis know, he was working for the British intelligence agency MI5 and reporting back about everything he learned, which helped lead to the capture of the other agents. Number 1. Operation Eiche By the time Allied forces invaded Italy in 1943, much of the country saw itself as having lost the war. The citizens voted their fascist and pro-Nazi leader Benito Mussolini out of power, and the king arrested him. This troubled Adolf Hitler, who believed that maintaining Mussolini's power was necessary for keeping Italy's support in the war. He wasn't wrong. By then, Italy had already agreed to participate in secret peace talks with the Allies. Hitler invaded northern Italy, splitting the country in two, and began his mission to rescue Mussolini. In a mission codenamed Operation Eiche, that later became known as the Grand Sasso Raid, Hitler ordered Waffen-SS officer Otto Skorzeny to free Mussolini before he was turned over to the Allies. Skorzeny traced the disgraced dictator's whereabouts to a remote ski resort in the Apennine Mountains. He traveled there on gliders with a team of 16 SS troopers, approaching silently before they stormed the property. The intruders overwhelmed the guards with ease and destroyed their radio equipment. They then located Mussolini, who reportedly exclaimed, I knew my friend Adolf Hitler would not leave me in the lurch. Skorzeny rushed to get him aboard a plane and personally escorted him to Austria. Not a single bullet was fired throughout the entire raid, which was carried out in less than 10 minutes. Mussolini went on to lead a puppet government that the Nazis set up in northern Italy. By early 1945, he realized that the Allies were gaining the upper hand on the Italian peninsula. Not wanting to fall into American or British custody or be tried as a war criminal in his own country, Mussolini and his mistress, Clara Petacci, attempted to flee to neutral Switzerland. They encountered partisan forces at the border and were shot dead. Italian authorities made an example out of them by displaying their bodies in the streets of Milan. Thanks for watching. Which of these secret Nazi operations do you think would have done the most damage? Let me know your thoughts in the comments and remember to subscribe for more videos about crazy history. See you next time. Bye!